Hey everyone, welcome back to another week of Fallout 4 Mods. I have no idea why I'm on this ship, but you know what I do know? I know mods. Let's go. Fallout 2 style pipe rifle by Taco Duck. If Fallout 4 pipe rifles are too fancy for you, then come on down to Taco Duck Town. This pipe rifle is truly homemade. As in, it was made most likely where Taco Duck lives. At home. There are no mods for this weapon, you get it as is. And there's no custom animations either, so if that's a deal breaker, then more pipe rifles for me. Trinity Shotgun by Newer Mind 43 and Captain Ultima. This beautiful shotgun can be found at Trinity Church and sports three shots before reload. Included are nine receivers, four barrels, and three sights. On version 1.1, there's a small glitch where sights float when you reload, but this problem will most likely be fixed in the next release. The P113, a highly moddable heavy plasma caster by Mr. Casual, aka Buff Scale. Bringing the beloved plasma caster to Fallout 4, this mod features a vendor, a new enemy, and plenty of mods for your weapon. The plasma caster can be purchased from Plasman, which also sells ammo and plenty of variations of the weapon. Mods included are 10 receivers, 7 barrels, 4 frames, and 5 capacitors. There are also 3 unique legendary variants, which I was unable to find, so you know they're good. They're good in secret. Also, there's a jetpack too. There, there's a lot of things in this mod. It's, it's great. Outfit Collection, Legree by Legree. This adds six beautiful armors to the game, each with a unique style and flair. Detail on these are really fantastic. Only problem I had was with a missing texture on the Metropolis armor, but I'm sure that'll be fixed soon. Armors can't be upgraded, but if you're dressing up this snazzy, you don't really need it. Train Power Armor by TrainWiz. Located in the southern part of the Commonwealth, an abandoned train sits and waits. Upon entering and pulling some lever thing, you're transported to a train hub where you'll have to solve puzzles, fight ghouls, and survive to acquire the famed Train Power Armor. Once you get the new armor, you can paint it any of five colors. There are also 30 new mods, sound effects, and special mechanics for the power armor as well. There's also an ability to build steam, which can be used in place of AP when sprinting, or for a variety of other actions and bonuses. Vertibird Faction Paint Schemes by Roast and Ghost. Quite simply, this adds unique vertibird textures for different factions. Factions included are the US Army, Brotherhood of Steel, Railroad, Minutemen, and the Gunners. Simple mod, but it adds some nice flair to the regular vertibirds. Project Lunar by Stupid Dunmer. Located southeast of Concord is an abandoned teleporter. Located there is a small backstory about an escaped institute scientist. So grab your spacesuit and jump on the teleporter. It's time to go to the moon. The moon has less gravity along with near silence except for your character's movement and weapons. Currently there are four locations on the moon. The Institute Crater where you arrive. Lunar Base Alpha where you can build like any settlement. Except for recruitment signals you can't build those. Might be a little bit hard to get settlers on the moon. An alien crash site. And W4F77 containment. Which contains the deadliest creature ever known. A dead space gorilla. Stupid Dunmer has stated that this is a work in progress. So future updates could possibly include a star skybox, quests, and even more locations. I am Robobrain by M. Constructed out of chemistry bench, Robobrain armor is a single piece of armor that converts you into a glorious and deadly robo person. This goes for first and third person views too. At an armor workbench, there are 16 colors to choose from and the standard armor improvements we all know and love. Plus, when you run around, you make robot noises. Mm. We is my week! The Power of Power Armors by John Connor. This actually isn't that weird at all. These armors are actually pretty cool. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Is that where you make the armor? Uh, okay, I guess. Huh? Yeah, okay. I, I occasionally watch his videos. Hmm. Uh, okay. Sure. While the crafting section for the armors may be a bit much for myself, the armors themselves are pretty impressive. Armors can be built on frames that you build yourself, one being the standard and the other one that you can jerk off to. I mean, I mean it says it right in the description. See? I'm not- it says to do it. You gotta do it, too. This mod review, you, you guys don't want to know. 
The armors come in two varieties, that of the Samus style, and the other is called Berserker, I do believe. Styles are Steel, Camo, Carbon Fiber, Red Steel, Titanium, and Viral. Pretty sweet armors with some character to go along with the creation process. Alright everyone, that's going to do it for this week's Fallout 4 mods. Hope you enjoyed. As usual, if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments. I'll look at them. I'll go, yeah. And then I'll read some more. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed. And I shall see you in the future. Away!